Today the, we celebrate the Feast of Saints Peter and Paul since this feast has been transferred to the United States. For much of the world it is the Holy Day of Obligation, but for the United States it, was, it is not, um, but the solemnity is transferred to the following Sunday. And as we think about these great saints, it's important for us to realize we have a great calling and a, a very honorable calling to follow them to become saints. We can't see the saints as someone so far above us that it's something unattainable. We all have a purpose in this life. From our basic catechism, we know we are to know, love, and serve God. But as we go about our day, we should be ever seeking to understand how to do this better, and the grace is to persevere in that. To know, love, and serve, we we have to follow in that order. To know, love, and serve also, in a certain sense, helps us at each of the three stages of the interior life. And the first stage is the purgative stage, the way of beginners. And St. Teresa classifies beginners in two different ways, believing souls and good souls. And it's important to understand this is hundreds of years ago that she lived, and this is something that's not new. Human nature and spiritual realities remain the same. The believing souls strive to harmonize piety and worldliness, and good souls are those who are initiated in mental prayer. And this distinction is very telling. It shows the power of mental prayer properly made as something that helps us sooner than later to see how piety and the world cannot be reconciled. Those who still struggle to part with the world need to think seriously on the consequences of sin and the dangers that the world brings us to, the occasions therein. All the temporal misery, that is all but a faint shadow of the eternal misery of the lost. How can the all-merciful God put someone in hell forever This is a struggle for many today. Why? Simply without the light of faith, they cannot see the true solution. But by faith, we begin to understand sin, its consequences, and the infinite love of God has for us to sacrifice his only son for us, but also the infinite justice required by the free rejection of that precious redemption, preferring sin to redemption. We also have to understand God does not desire the death of the sinner, but that they be converted, as St. Paul tells us. But by free will, souls can refuse this mercy and love. Indeed, how terrible sin is. It blinds and corrupts the soul. The will is, becomes uncorrectable to eternal loss. So what is the solution? St. Alphonsus tells us simply, Those who pray will surely save their souls. Those who do not pray will surely lose their soul. We can see the power of prayer in the epistle today. When St. Peter is freed from prison by the prayers of the church. The problem is, too often our faith is weak. We do not see the effects of prayers in our daily life the effects of sin in our souls. The different influences from the world unchecked in a soul anesthetized it into a phlegmatic state where spiritual realities have little impact. And this is most dangerous. The solution is to pray with faith, to see the danger, not to rely on the emotions. This is why St. Augustine says it so well when he says, Many want to understand first, then believe. But the reverse is true. We must first believe and understand. In the world of silence and prove it to me that we live in today, that's a very difficult thing. But by grace, we can attain that, that trust that's needed to believe God, to trust him first. If heaven and hell do not impress us, we cannot believe what we profess to believe. If we do not think of them often, they cannot impress us as much as is necessary. Think of all the good prayer does in our lives and individuals in history. The greatest prayer of all, the Mass, 
Do we read about it, meditate on it? Do we understand and pray to understand it deeper? No matter how much we understand the Mass, there's always more to be discovered there. Imagine if someone were in great need and had a great debt to pay. And unless they paid that debt, they would be in prison for life, in a terrible prison. Imagine the shame and confusion and frustration if after they were imprisoned, they heard how someone had purchased their property and found a great treasure there, which would be more than enough to pay all their debts. This comparison pales in comparison to the reality of those who do not understand the Mass, Holy Communion, the Rosary, and the power of these, the necessity of these in our day. If we do not understand, we cannot appreciate. If we do not appreciate, we cannot desire. And if we do not desire, it is most difficult, well nigh impossible, to will what we must. A complete conversion of the will is necessary daily because our fallen nature keeps pulling us away from the path of salvation. We have to desire perfection. And we see that. We see the necessity of devotion to the sacred heart. Tepidity, not caring. Tepidity to fervor in the promises of that devotion. We come to perfection. So if we are tepid, we need to see the importance of taking time to appreciate what we have. The cup of iniquity is filled to overflowing. What we do not appreciate may soon be taken away, or it may be some years. Whenever it happens, we want to be ready. So it becomes even more important for us, for all, to be in the habit of checking ourselves spiritually. How do I prepare for prayer? Do I prepare for prayer in this world of rush, rush? How is the rosary and meditation, how are those going? Are they truly prayers? Are they truly focused on God? What resolutions have I made? Am I keeping those resolutions? Do I offer all my actions in the day in gratitude and reparation to this sacred heart? Do I understand the power of this? So short, so simple, yet so neglected. Do we or do we not engage the enemy within on a daily, constant basis? What sin is the biggest threat to our souls? Are we using a daily exam to monitor the enemy's movements? What are we doing to counter them? How is our mortification? Is it helping us? Are we holding up under trials? How? Do we accept or rebel? Do we prepare well for communions? How long do we spend in thanksgiving? How important is that to us? How often do we make spiritual communions? You see, if we faithfully do this, we will, if we do it well, much more easily can we stay on track. We can much more easily come from well, gee, I would like to do that. I'd like to become a saint. To I will. This is no less than the difference between heaven and hell. If we are to believe St. Thomas Aquinas, perhaps the greatest doctor of the church, who when asked said, what, asked what we must do to save our souls, he simply said, will it. Are we that strong in that area? with our souls. We can be, but only with grace. Grace only comes through prayer, sacrifice, sacraments. Where there is a will, there is a way, as the saying goes. When someone wants to get something bad enough, they overcome all obstacles in business, as an athlete, whatever it is. Do we want heaven that bad? Do we want heaven more than hell? In theory, it's easy to say yes, but in reality, it is our lives, our free will, by grace or the rejection of it, not by words, not by a simple fleeting thought or weak desire. This is how we choose our eternal abode, by our daily lives. 
During this month of July, let us beg our Blessed Mother to wash our souls in the precious blood of her Son to purify all that infects and corrupts our soul and will. So the will of God will rule our lives and bring us to our eternal heavenly home. Come what may, let nothing stop our course. Jesus, meek and humble of heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.